Hey y'all, and welcome to this week's Womanly Wisdom Wednesday, episode 3.1. We are going over the book, uh, The Power of a Praying Wife by Stormy O'Martian. This book teaches us why and how we should pray for our husbands. Disclosure. I am not, I did not write this book. I am not in any way connected to this book other than I have read it. It made my prayer binder based on this book. The content in this video is for educational purposes only. Well, also encouragement and inspiration too, I hope. The content in this video gives a simple and quick overview on introducing what this book is. So we are still in um, chapter one, the power, or the, his wife. And so we've already gone over the first three sections last week. So this week we are in, I don't even like him. How can I pray for him? Shut up and pray and believe or not. So our first section is called, I don't even like him. How can I pray for him? Have you ever been so mad at your husband that the last thing you wanted to do was pray for him? So he, or so have I. It's hard to pray for someone when you're angry or he's hurt you. But that's exactly what God wants us to do. If he asks us to pray for our enemies, how much more should we be praying for the person with whom we have become one and are supposed to love? But how do we get past the unforgiveness and critical attitude. The part that really strikes me is, yeah, we are supposed to pray for our enemies. When we are supposed to pray for our enemies, how much more should we be praying for the person with whom we have become one? So now we go into our first uh, bit of scripture, and it's in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 11. In all of the scriptures, um, in the book, they use, I think, the King James Version. But in everything I do, I use um, the Amplified Version. So again, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 11. Nevertheless, Woman is not independent of man, nor is man independent of woman. Now, in the context in which she is using this scripture, she's getting to the point of, when you reach a level of anger with your husband to where you say he can live his life and you'll live your own life, that's when bad things can really start happening in your marriage. The door for the enemy to attack is left wide open. And no one wants that. That's what starts leading to separation. And the that's just when the rabbit hole just is opened up and things can head south quite quickly, very badly. And so then we move on to the next section, shut up and pray. I've learned that's what I need to do a lot of the time. <laughs> There is a time for everything, it says in the Bible, and it is never more true than in a marriage, especially when it comes to the words we say. There is a time to speak and a time not to speak, and happy is the man whose wife can discern between the two. Anyone who has been married for any length of time realizes that there are things that are better left unsaid. A wife has the ability to hurt her husband more deeply than anyone else can, and he can do the same to her. No matter how much apology, the words cannot be erased. They can only be forgiven, and that is not always easy. Sometimes, anything we say will only hinder the flow of what God wants to do. So, it's best to, well, shut up and pray. <laughs> Proverbs twenty one nineteen. 
It is better to dwell in a desert land than with a contentious and troublesome woman. Proverbs 27, 5. Better is an open-minded reprimand of loving correction mm -hmm. than love that is hidden. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 and 7. Verse 1. There is a season, a time appointed for everything, and a time for every delight and event or purpose under heaven. Verse 7. A time to tear apart, and a time to sew together, a time to keep silent, and a time to speak. Proverbs 29, 11. A short-sighted fool always loses his temper and displays his anger. But a wise man uses self-control and holds it back. Ecclesiastes 5, 2. Do not be hasty with your words, speaking careless words or vows, or impulsive in thought to bring up a matter before God. For God is in heaven and you are on earth. Therefore, let your words be few. 1 Corinthians 4.20 For the kingdom of God is not based on talk, but on power. And next section, believe or not. And we start out in scripture, 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. In the same way, you wives, be submissive to your own husbands, subordinate, not as inferior, but out of respect for the responsibilities of entrusted to husbands and their accountability to God. And so partnering, part, <laughs> partnering with them so that even if some do not obey the word of God, they may be won over to Christ without discussion by the godly lives of their wives. When they see your modest and respectful behavior together with your devotion and appreciation love your husband encourage him and enjoy him as a blessing from god <laughs> this concludes this week's womanly wisdom wednesday in the power of a praying wife i encourage you to get the book to read even deeper for yourself. There's great information in it that I'm not covering in these podcasts, and she gives great examples. I know I listed the scriptures, but there's she gives a lot of context, an explanation. She adds to the nutritious meat, and it's really important that you... I, I, understand where she's coming from but if you do have any questions or um just maybe not fully understanding what's meant when she puts a certain scripture somewhere let me know and i'll do my best to help with that now like i said i'm only covering the basics to give a general overview and to get your feet wet um, these podcasts are meant for encouragement and inspiration on our journeys with God. And if you're married, or even if you're not married, if you're someone who is, wants to be married someday, this is really great stuff to know. Marriage isn't easy. It's hard. Just like anything in life, it seems. And that's the way it was intended, because through hardness is how we learn. I pray that this does bring you encouragement. Much love and may peace be with y'all. God bless.